hello everyone uh, welcome to this video this video I want to represent to you simple concept of fractals in thin films we recently published a book chapter on the use of power spectrum density for service characterization of thin film in a book called uh, published it in this book in Wiley the book is called uh, Photo Energy and Thin Film Materials by Xiao Yu Yang the book was published 25th of March so you can see our chapter is uh, number 9 you can quickly if you are interested you can quickly refer through that book chapter and get the detailed analysis of thin film using power spectrum density and in that case i want to present you the a simple slide explaining the concept used in that book chapter so this work was presented in south african society for mechanical engineers in 2017 november and that work was later extended to a book chapter which I've just shown you. So, uh, by introduction, atomic force microscopy is usually in studying surface topography to give image of this nature. And what kind of information do we get from AFM? We get the information about the vertical noise and the lateral or distribution of the features. And mostly, what is got uh, the what is obtained from this kind of services is a uh, roughness values this could be root mean square roughness average roughness and so forth skewness kurtosis second is the surface microstructure which shows the grains the morphology and the distribution of such that is a conventional information obtained from f images now when we talk about the root mean square roughness we are basically talking about the roughness expressed in terms of the deviations from a mean plane like shown in the figures a and b the mean of the heights of this rough surface are shown by the blue r blue line as indicated by the black arrow and as physically can be seen b is rougher than a root mean square roughness expressed as such is good for comparing roughness of surfaces when they have similar structures like a and b if the, in this case now we consider if we consider our other services a and b we find that uh, sorry about that we find that uh, physically these surfaces look different but when you do root mean square roughness you find a and b will have the same roughness this means that the structure in both surfaces have the same mean have the same deviation from the mean plane indicated as blue but physically b appears rougher than a why because horizontally the structures for the two surfaces are different this is the limitation of the root mean square roughness it does not give the lateral roughness difference in surfaces okay so how do we incorporate the lateral or horizontal information about the surface features how do you know where the bumps or peaks on the surface start and end? These questions are important in providing detailed information on lateral and distinction between different surface structures, peaks and valleys. These questions are best covered by using the fractal theory. And in this case, one method of studying surface through fractal theory is the use of what we call the power spectral density analysis of AFM images. This method uses power uses power spectral density functions. 
Now, in this case, I want to illustrate to you the steps you take an image to obtain data using PSD. We have said that a power spectral density is most de descriptive than the root mean square and it uses the first Fourier transform theory to decompose the surface features into spatial wavelength and allows analysis of surface topography in frequency domain. So what happens, you get the AFM image, you subject it to fast Fourier transform algorithm which gives you a wave image. This wave image will determine the power densities of these wave images and then you can interpret the, the profile extracted from those uh, images. It is possible to derive the contribution or the power density of different features to the roughness. It, th this method assumes that the surface structures exhibit sinusoidal morphologies. And this is a, a simple expression of two dimensional power spectral density, where Zn uh, is the height function of the surface. There's a lot of literature in this and we have covered it in our paper, in our book chapter uh, as I earlier showed you. Now, when you're doing PSD analysis in this work, we obtain AFM images using a vehicle dimension that 100 AFM facility in tapping mode at optimal conditions. Then we subjected the image to image processing using nanoscope and Goodion software. Nanoscope comes with the FM facility, which you have to subscribe, but Goodion software is an open source software, free of charge online. Then uh, you do several image processing. Then you can now do power spectral density using the Welch algorithm of fast Fourier transform in MATLAB code. And then from there you interpret the the results or the profiles obtained from the MATLAB using k correlation model or power spectral or uh, the power law or whichever mathematical model you are familiar with. The k correlation model we use in this case as assumes this kind assumes that the power spectral density can be written as such where a is related to the low frequencies, B is the correlation length, and C is the transition related to PSD at very high. It's transition between high and low frequencies. So in our case, we have two images of, a f of aluminum thin film deposited on titanium TI6 substrate. And uh, these are the 3D images of those samples. Uh, we just uh, did a section analysis to see that the profile are really having a sinusoidal morphology and then we can use the power spectral density for analysis but when it's subjected it to, to the MATLAB code we get these profiles and the continuous duct line is experimental and the K model gives us a perfect PSD as shown in both cases. So what you do now is to obtain the more the value the unknowns A, B and C from the frac fr from the from the K A B C or K correlation model. And this is what we got at 150 and 200 watts. We can see that uh, the value of A is higher at 200 watts B is also higher at 200 watts and C reduces at higher sputtering power. We make the following observation that the two profiles have small flat region that's at low spatial frequency. We have small flat region which indicates very high lateral roughness for the surfaces of the thin film at both RF powers. The K correlation model shows that A, which is related to power density at low frequency, increase in A indicates larger radius of the Fourier transform. So we'll come back. We say that uh, 
increase in A increase in A at 200 rods indicate formation of more structures laterally on the surface and B is the coloration length transition from peaks to valleys and vice versa larger values of B indicate lower lateral roughness on the surface which means that 200 watts or roughness is reported expected due to desification of the film at higher power C describes the spectrum at high frequency in Fourier image it shows that it shows the very finer and tiny details of the time domain image low value of C indicates that most of the surface structures are large in this case, low C is noted at 200 watts, since most surfaces have evolved to increase in power. In conclusion, this method can be used to describe the lateral roughness and to complement the height function of thin film deposited at different conditions. The two cases, k correction model showed higher lateral roughness is obtained at 200 watts, which is consistent in with literature on roughness power relationship. Proper processing of FM images should be undertaken consistently on all images before PSD computation for consistency and to avoid errors and introduction of artifacts. For statistical accuracy, PSD should be computed for several images of the same sample but at different locations and uh, statistical analysis should be applied to determine the variance and get accurate results. Thank you very much. And these two articles were very useful to the development of this work. So I request you kindly to check and go through this book. You can buy the book and or you can purchase our chapter and please try to use this concept in your work. So I'll give you a brief uh, overview of how the chapter looks like or what i've presented is well illustrated here we have detailed equations about describing the area of two dimensional power spectrum power spectrum density i have also included the methodology i've shown the the the, the flow chart of my matlab code and uh, here the results are presented, well tabulated results. This is what we call in the Fourier transform outputs. These are the same graphs as I presented in the PowerPoint. These are the ABC coloration, but in this case we included also the power law. So, and the detailed description and the conclusions are shown. Thank you very much, and please like my channel goodbye